and we got Asian and European stocks, but we did not yet get to U.S. equities. And here to join us is Melissa Armo of Stock Swoosh. Melissa, thank you so much for being with us. Now, let me get one thing straight. Is it the so Stock Swoosh or Stock Swoosh? Either one, Bart, is terrific. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Well, we, we love you. We want to get the, the name of your company correct. So, Melissa Armo, founder of Stock Swoosh, thank you for joining us. Melissa, what, do you, what, is you, what is your take on things going on now? We seem to have another day today that's a little bit up, but are we worried about some of this economic data coming out, and all of a sudden that's going to be a tipping point, and we're going to see some more of vexing volatility? I don't think the volatility is over. I think that we held today, we held yesterday, we rallied into the close on Friday, but to me, it really is a weak hold. We are not that far off the high, so overall, if you're a long-term investor, the market still looks very bullish, but if you're a trader, or if you're a swing trader, I wouldn't have bought right back into this market on Friday or Monday or today, because we still possibly could go down and retest the lows from Friday, and I will tell you if we do, we could break that. So I don't know. I would say to be safe, wait until we rally over that big sell-off day that was one week ago today when the market really tanked. Once we get over the high of that day, which in the spiders is around 275-ish, then I would feel a lot better about saying, go ahead, you can get in long, swing traders, day traders, the market's going to move up and make another brand new all-time high. The economic data this week you know, the market could have a move, but I don't know if it's going to be up from that, and we won't know till it happens. And, and uh, speaking of economic data, you know, it's next week that the, uh, the, the, the Federal Open Markets Committee, the Federal Reserve, meets and, uh, to discuss raising interest rates. That could be another thing that, that's out there. Melissa, let, let me ask you, though, there's, all, there's this mantra in trading uh, that you buy the dip. And so when, when, when prices go down and we've seen, you know, we're into correction territory, as we've discussed on the program before, 10% uh, down from the market highs, which were 30% up year over year in, in January. But, you know, you're, you're, you're urging some caution about getting back in. But are there some deals out there? Uh, should some of our viewers be looking at buying the dip? No, I wouldn't say anyone should be buying any dips, and that's not the way that I look at a chart. Again, I'm a technical trader, but whether technically or fundamentally, you look at it, again, the market's strong. I say you got to know your time horizon. If you're a long-term investor and you want to buy the dip, that's fine, but no, you could get jostled around a lot because it's really not a good idea to predict the low and predict the high. Why? Because you're never going to be able to do that consistently over the long haul. Wait. Wait till the market gives you the confirmation, and I'm telling you where that is. It's over the high of every Thing in the Dow and the SPY and the QQQs, if you look at charts or any of the things that fell from last Monday, wait until they get over that high of that big selling bar that started the correction, that started the collapse down. So no, I wouldn't be buying any dips because here's the thing. How many dips are we going to have? How do you know this is the last dip? It's not that we're not going to move higher eventually. Is it going to be in the next week, in the next two days? Is it going to take two months? I don't know. So I can't predict that. I wait until it happens and it's going to be where I said and it's probably going to happen when the market gaps up in the pre-market it opens a lot higher in the morning at 9 30 and rallies all day and we probably lift over that high of that past monday but i can't say for sure if that's going to happen this week and i don't know if it's going to happen in the next month so you wait you wait until it happens because if you don't have a high threshold for pain and for risk you could be in the market happy as a clam today and yesterday and then all of a sudden tomorrow you might be down and you might not be able to handle it and and if that happens, I'm telling you people won't be able to handle it, they're going to get scared, and they're going to quick sell out, and that's going to push the market down and have another big red day, because people jumped in too quick, in my opinion, if they're in. Now, this may go along with your, uh, your, your thought about not buying dip, not getting in, but, but let, let me test your patience on this question. What about <laughs> rebalancing? If people have, you know, lost some uh, and uh, thinking, wait a minute, I don't want the same exposure I've had in the past. Should they should they pull out and should they should they maybe rebalance their portfolio? Or is your advice just the same? Hang tough for now uh, unless you want to get smacked around a little bit. It's not a yes or no answer because it depends on your situation. If you're 35 or you're 65, the answer to that question is going to be a lot different. Are you retired or are you going to retirement? You know, you don't know. If you have a lot of time to invest in the market, I'd say stay with it. If you're nearing retirement or in retirement right now, then that's a different story. 
Melissa, it's always so great to have you. Really appreciate your advice. We're listening to it. I know our viewers appreciate it as much as we Thank do here you. at the show. Melissa Armo, founder of Stock Swoosh, thank you for joining us. <laughs>